Ain't no reason we should be in a fight No demolition, get the vote, get to see what you like Blue creation compositions already written by themselves Hackers for the people not believing in gosh Good job! And for those of you just tuning in and wondering why I'm here on Super Forest and giving today's interview and why it's going to be a little different than others is because, in my opinion, as a reader and follower of the superforest.org super blog, I find that Super Forest is made up of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. So that's why I'm here today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, how did you, like... Find Super Forest. How did I find the Super Forest? You know, it was just a friend telling me about it. You know, a friend of mine knew Jackson and said, "Hey, my friend Jackson has started this blog. You should check it out." And you know, um, it was back when Super Forest was hosted by Blogspot. Yeah. You know, so it was uh, that was it. I just started reading it and saw some interesting things, and then watching it evolve just was inspiring. You know? Yeah, a lot of people have gotten on board, and the look of it changes, and the content goes deeper and more dedicated every week. Yeah. So you've been blogging for a while before that too, right? Yes. I feel like I was blogging before I even knew what the word blog was, and then when the word blog came out, I actually got a little irritated for a while. I was like, <laughs> blog? What is blog? I mean, I keep a journal on, on the internet, or... I keep an online journal, but I don't blog. What is blog? And it's like, okay, I get it now, you know, I get it. And so I guess, you know, in my personal archives, I've been keeping a public um, conversation, I guess, going since about 2002. Um, but I started my blog, which is on Blogspot, uh, in early 07, I think, 2007, I think it was, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever go back and read old stuff? I do, I do, yeah, I, I check in every now and then, um, and funny enough, I also, I, I can see in my folders how many items exist in each folder, so I can see how many posts I did in 2002 and 2003. And in this year alone, we're already in August, getting ready to be September now. I've already surpassed every other year in how many posts. And that's what I've always, I keep foreseeing that. Like, I want to be even more dedicated to it. And really, not to bring just readership to me, but to really spread ideas and possibilities with people. And not even that they have to believe in my ideas or take them on, but maybe... My ideas is just an example that your ideas are also valid. Your ideas are also limitless, you know, or, or these have been some of my struggles. Maybe you can relate, and now we're free of them just by choosing to, you know, so. And having that kind of mindset has actually caused me to blog more, and, uh, and I love it. I really do. It's, it's a community I can count on. you read the comments? Sometimes I read the comments. There are a lot, so you know I usually read. Uh, I don't know. There's no usually about it. I just I sometimes get to it and sometimes I don't. There's a few posts I do that are totally random or or are poetry or photo blogs, and I don't usually check the comments there. But I do the Q and A's now uh, on Fridays and Mondays, and and so I definitely kind of get into the comments there because the questions currently come from Twitter and I realize there's a lot of people who don't use Twitter and so they'll comment like, man, I wish I used Twitter, otherwise I would ask this. And I've caught that a few times by reading the comments so I'm, I'm able to sneak those answers in to the next one or directly answer that person and so on, you know. I mean, the online communities are so vast. And people are acting at all times from all the different time zones around the world. Yeah. So it's always on, you know. So I, I really have to be responsible about how I use it and when I use it. Otherwise I could always be on, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's yet another conversation I'm trying to keep open. But I also know that there's a physical world where I interact with, with people in their presence that I have to also keep a space clear for. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
Um, you're talking about the pictures, like, on the blog, like, when did you get into that? Like, I know you've been in the Polaroids for a long time, but when was that? Uh, well, through my website, jasonrose.com, I was only limited to words. And I tried doing a couple things and creating uh, a space that I could host videos and photos, and it was just too strange. I, I didn't have all the HTML, I didn't have all the code already embedded in me. And so when I found Blogspot, it made it really easy for me to just, oh, here's how to add a link, and here's how to put a photo and a video, and it was just, then I was off running. So it was actually through the technology that it inspired me to be even more expressive, yeah. you know, which is a lot like what Superforce is all about. Um, so when you're first starting out, you know, like 10 years ago, like, did you have in your mind that you were going to, was it just like, this, I'm going to try this? Uh, yes. I didn't know what this was. Like, like music. Yeah, music was definitely one of the things I was going to try. And ten years ago, it was, it was what was working for me. And it's the only way I was finding work. Every other job, I was miserable. I didn't feel like I was contributing to the world. Um, and that's something I've discovered recently. It's like, to really lead with your heart and to be passionate about something is so much more, um, is such a greater contribution to mankind. You know, if, if something in your heart says to be a poet, but that seems so unreasonable to so many people, and your parents say, no, we really want you to be a veterinarian. You know you love animals, you're going to be good at it. So if you settle and you go and be a veterinarian and you serve animals, it's great. But if your heart was always on poetry, it probably serves the world better for you to actually have followed through and been a poet. You know, even though how scary and broke you could be, whatever words or passion was in there could probably move people in a direction that was all love, you know, rather than get lost in an office of a veterinarian. And that's just one analogy, you know. So I did that 10 years ago. I said, I, I can't do anything else. I don't, I don't do anything else. I, Sure, I can have any other job, but anybody can have jobs, you know, it's ordinary. I want to do something extraordinary. I want to see what it feels like to go after this. You know, I'm going to give myself till I'm 40. At the time, I was 21 when I made the real confident decision to really quit all jobs and just make this my only job. So I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm just going to go for it. And it's a bit of a hustle. It's a bit of a trade sometimes, but then after a while, you really do see that it's a creation, you know, a lot of people say, well, how'd you do it, who did you meet, what did you have to do, and you really just create it as you go, I mean, you're inventing it the whole time, there's no manual, especially in the arts or in any field of self-expression, no one else can tell you how you should express yourself, you know, and so if you do it passionately, there are other people whose field is, I want to support those in the self-expression business. That's the way I self-express. I self-express by lifting up the artist and hanging his art on the wall. And you find communities for it all, simply because you're real about it. Climb up over the top to pay the state of the soul.